guys. Hi. Um, so this is a series of poems that I wrote. They're uh, love letters to Alain Badieu. And part of what's going on here is the tension of what happens when a poet who's, you know, not logic or something is writing to the philosopher whose structure, right? So what's happening there? And then also it kind of just turns into like me being the bitchy lover imposing Alain's four conditions of philosophy on him, which are love, politics, math, and poetry. Um, so that should prepare you for some of the, you know, what's coming. But anyway, so it starts off, there's a great line that he wrote, which is, and excuses a lot of what I later say to him, <laughs> which is, let us add that contemporary philosophy addresses itself at all times to women. It might even be suspected that it is, as discourse, partly a strategy of seduction. There, got it. Round two. Multiplicity, said Badieu. You motherfucker stole my brain, except you're wrong. Still working in Euclid's plane. Enlightenment is the real projective, where parallel lines meet at the horizon and a line is a circle. It's true that the Abrahamic religions have a problem with historicity and crusades. Somebody's always got to be right before and in order to get to God. Buddha knows the line is really a circle at the horizon anyway, where we all should strive to dwell. The point, it's a line. The line, it's a circle. The circle, it's a flower. That point dairy dog collapsed in the derivatives market? Don't worry about it. We'll fix it when we wake up. Cat life number 27, ladybug reincarnate. <laughs> Dear Alain, I want to meet you very badly and write you love poems. I want to know where you put love in your schema, if you believe in it. Did you ever read Zamyatin's We? It's what Orwell based 1984 on. He got kicked out of Russia before it was Bolshevik. But Zamyatin foretold a world where everything was algebra and the only thing to wake up the creativity, the poetry pole you juxtapose like math, the Dionysus to your linear Apollo. Well, let's just say Dionysus didn't dance without Venus. Do you think Venus exists? You must believe in the the undefined, the, the poetry that beds the data when it's young and vomiting on the floor before it grows into a tall and strong polynomial chain. You said you did. Back to that heart guy, he ended up talking about love too, and I think that's where his career ended. Nobody wants to listen to the mushy stuff. But I gotta tell you, your, my friend Chad B said it best, I don't care if you're the tiniest, whiniest, most pampered cheerleader or the hoodest, hardest, most jock football player. Everybody got somebody, put them fetal in the kitchen, make them batshit crazy. Is this the constant? <laughs> Is this the constant in the incompleteness theorem? Desire? I hate that word. What about capital L love? Should I just ask somebody to write me a prescription and forget about it? Dear Alain, forgive me. Burn my letters. I forgot to write par avion. Perhaps they will not arrive. <laughs> I dearly hope so. Burn them, please. I will be a better student. I will be more serious. Do not forsake me. Yours, Katie. Affair number one. Dear Julian, meet me in the rat alley behind the, by the old mattress. The Four Seasons is for criminals. In code, Katya. <laughs> That's Julian Assange. Um, <laughs> Dear Alan, I'm sick from being serious. I'm sick of this fucking shit. Speaking to you on your terms and your vocabulary requires a tired precision I loathe. I like monkeys and raspberries and autumn squash cooked for one hour at 350 degrees Fahrenheit with a glaze of two tablespoons butter, agave nectar, and Dijon mustard, lightly speckled with pepper. I don't mean the cooking channel. I mean John Coltrane for lovers on repeat because it's Sunday, the holiday of the sun regime from 300 BC where the thrones met the saints and the prophets. I mean, the Roman emperors bent the Christian details to gain the wealth of the people's love of astrologers, the first empirical data. These days, Pfizer does a six-week trial, and we call it truth, but 700 years the Sumerians documented the position of Saturn and the price of wheat in its habernacle to us. I wonder, why a doctrine? Even if you win history, that unattainable virgin, you'll spend eternity with the maggots, the fact mongers typing away at your flesh. I suppose you don't mind contributing to humanity, just a bone left, a truism in the end, but would it have been any different otherwise? Personally, I'm leaving only ashes, burnt pages, not deconstruction, pure flame. 
You philosophers are made of metal, but I am earth, water, fire, the Triskelion, horned and abandoned. Who wants the power of the name if it is only to claim your own bullseye? Already got it plenty. Darts, doing just fine. Well, it's sassy time tonight, yes, agreed. Your logic's got me all bunched like a rolled sleeve. It's fine enough on its own, but against my wrinkles and veins and memory, something else has to course against the grain. There's so many of you arguing your details since the beginning of time. Screw it, I want a literary song. Unwind the arguments because I was never that great at compartments, and when I was, it didn't get me laid. You hide in math, I hide in the moon, and I only ask you this, if e to the negative 2 pi i contains all the numbers we have never seen, but that make the circle, the financial world, and the imaginary realm all come together to equal one, then you must believe in things we cannot see or touch or feel, but only believe. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Alain, philosophers and poets, we're both trying to reach God. You the form, we the content. You the throne, we the light. Thoughtfully, Katie. Dear Alain, my father told me my project to write you love letters was creepy. <laughs> I said, imagination and hope are elements as real as the table before your eyes. Dear Father, à la prochaine, Cathy. Dear Alain, my new roommate Brandon is a found poem. I like it. When I think of all the things I don't have time to be nostalgic for, I feel irresponsible. It makes me care about the heart more than being smart. It's not that time is a mirage, but that it's a villain, and I'm consensually guilty of moving on. There's no grammar around that, just hiding from the images that bring us most comfort. We long for revolution, but I have been there, and all that's fought for is the peace to enjoy the apple on the worn wood table. It's folksy to center the flowers in their vase, simple and symmetrical, but I'll still call it beautiful for my ma. Do you mind? Dear Alain, I've fallen into unrequited love again. There's nothing that makes me more fun to be around. <laughs> Dear Alain, these letters to you are shit. I'm only writing them because the literati will eat them. I know, but the truth is power is lines in the sand, and you know the bloom doesn't come from lines. Political events cannot be quantified. You said it. Page 7, 33, 142, 155, 98 to 100, X, Y, Z, A, B, J, Q, W. Politics and metaphysics, definitions, blah, blah, blah. Who cares about categories when there's death by dehydration? The bloom, Alain, I'm talking about the bloom. Tais-toi. I know you don't know it because it melts words. You talk about truth, but have you heard of the source? I'm going to melt you. <laughs> Dear Alain, just that disagreement can be more intimate than yeah, I know, me too, and the gulf between us filled me more than your cock pushed me up against my wall, the gulf between us daring me to fall right into the embrace of your views, wrong. I'm playing hard to get come here, now. I was sweet enough to show you where to climb, my nipples hard. Yes, you're lacking introspection to a fault, and I'm swelling with the lyric eye, but don't tell me you're somehow less self-involved you with your adoration of intellectual porn, false precision, and the smooth facade. Yes, you indulge in great antique moments of stolen admiration, the reflective mind, but this is still rap for academics, and we have the same ambivalent hard-on for theory, though it's too exclusive for our political proclamations, and we're full of fancy martinis, our hearts love, but somehow don't satisfy the romantic aluminum can of our cornfield dreams of peasant powerdom. Yes, we're filled with contradiction, my man, and so are you, despite your proclamations of sympathy, tender otherness, and sensuality as non-political dream moment. It's true, past your judgment, tick it in, whatever tribal proclamation inherited, developed, or inverted. We have to choose somehow. Ought, to be, ought it be a common language? Ni hui yun yu ma. Should you love that other? Could I love with that eye? Could it be a breath suspended by the challenge of the gulf? You say, Alain, that Mallarmé, who thinks nothing but his pure form, is the epitome of poesy. But you're wrong. The poet is who does the terrible task of ranking love, the anchor to your symphony, without which you are merely architecture. In short, I am too good for you. <laughs> 
Are you fucking kidding me, y'all lad? Look, you fucking toad. I took abstract algebra. I have a degree in pure mathematics, and I'm fucking telling you, logic isn't everything. Don't tell me I'm being bloody irrational, you goddamn dense academic. I'm leaving. Does it hurt now? Is that real? Where is your timeless heart in your stupid fucking set theory? Circumscribe that, you French toad. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Schlavo. How lovely to meet another Slovene here in New York. A rarity indeed, and you are delectable. Drinks tomorrow? I'll bring my earplugs. <laughs> Dear diary, of course, he returns now that I've turned my head. How logical. <laughs> Alain. It's not exactly in the moment of the Greeks. I use this just as a directionality to point you towards the fact that the sensation is not of this time. It's not, in fact, of any time. It's a place where time does not exist, or even words, perhaps contradiction only in a slow lethargy. It's rather unnameable, really. If you don't sense it, you don't sense it. I'm sorry. Cheers. Dear Alain, that was good. <laughs> Dear Alan, for you, baby, rules. Oh, but your own rules irk you? Touche. I enjoyed the less I enjoy the less structured anyway. Shall you admit fifty shades of capitalism, S and M, Sartre? Isn't philosophy a scheduled distribution of power? Sorry, I'll be good. They say in the next life the philosopher is a dancer. I say in the next life the poet is a janitor. Will you come with me? I'm with whiskey. Would you like so? Dear Alain, I thought we were talking about how I relate to the movie. But alas, it becomes something else. A philosophy that is above my head, though I do try. Yes, the letters are false. They're an artifice. It's a romance novel of sort aware of itself and self-critical of its selfness. You're right, I'm terrible at life because I am too political, very much so. Poetry is, as you say, my attempt to escape. I loathe the political view because it's terribly tedious, terribly so. As for believe versus imagine, yes, I am an idealistic nincompoop. I won't let go of the rubric. The rubric, by the way, is never break a heart. Into the streets of Cairo, go to every door. Tell them to come out tomorrow. We will not go home. Dear Alain, I love you more than ever. You wrote that the Tunisian and Egyptian uprisings have a universal significance. They prescribe new possibilities whose value is international. I could not agree more. When Mubarak finally stepped down, I was just headed from my office to lunch. I stepped outside to consider the importance of this revolution, this televised moment of history as important as the Paris Commune or the French Revolution or, or as important as Tahrir itself. Tahrir means to freedom, literally, or independence, as I'm sure you know. And as I stepped outside on the sidewalk, I began to sob. I really did. I was crying on the street and thought, perhaps maybe you look a little silly on the street here. So I went to the bookstore where my friend Rod works. I cried more at the bookstore. All in all, it took about two hours to exhaust myself of the tears, and I'm not sure anyone really understood. Most people just think I'm overly emotional or maybe crazy. But I cried because I'm not crazy, and Egypt proves it. That moment when he left, when Mubarak left through peaceful means, through universal, peaceful, spontaneous, beautiful power of the people, it's, it's every single person in the world who said things can be better. It's every single person in the world who dared to say torture is wrong. It's every single person who dared to dream. It's every single person who went to sleep with hope for a better future. It's every single ignorant fucking imbecile 
who only said no, going to hell. It's everyone who called me crazy for hoping, for believing, for wanting more. It's to hell with them, and it was worth it. It was all worth it. It was true. It is possible. It was worth the sacrifice. It was all worthwhile. We can, and the big words are worth the damn. And I cried and cried and cried because all the idealism was true, and all the blood and the bruises and the torture was losing. It wasn't structure anymore. It was a tall building made of electric fence for everyone to hail with bruises and scars and untouchables. That facade collapsed, and there was a sun to heal the scars, and the romance of poetry survives. And this is why I cried, for all the pain of anyone who ever said, I guess that's how it has to be, because it didn't have to be that way the day Mubarak left. It was singing and dancing in the street among all the people. It was the resounding ring of the subtle, nonviolent line. It was the rise out of silence of the truth, that magic of the white dove from the darkest gentleman's top hat. The scar became the badge and the tear became the holy water, the transcendence, the moment where the best side of humanity came true, and everything we write for, everything we live for, everything we dared to believe was worth it all. P.S. It's parallel lines meeting at infinity. It's when Gauss looked at the horizon and said, but parallel lines do meet. They meet at the horizon. It's the dream of the platonic form lapping at the edge of the shore and the tide rushing over one last time to a blazing red dawn, the kind that makes you wake up and breathe as if for the first time and all those tones of sarcasm fade into some jellyfish dying on the sand and it's blindingly beautiful stuff we always knew was there but just you grew too cynical to care except maybe deep in the night we risked a word or two of maybe and I hope and it still is and there is more and we dream and we dreamed and we dreamed and it was the real projective plane and things do happen at infinity and I still believe in love and I'm getting in a plane because I believe that if the Egyptians can can then why not we can have it too I still believe please tell me you do too I love you these words mean something tell me they mean something to you Bizu. dear Alain I'm not here to elaborate on your experience I'm here to remind you of your soul uh, Thank you everyone so much for your